The thing with cues, the first thing we're going to teach this horse is the cues we want her to know to go and to speed up. And with the cue, you want to start at your lowest level of pressure and escalate till you get the results you want and then, then release the pressure in time with them giving you the response they want. So when she says walk or get up or whatever she wants to say, and she doesn't get a reaction, then she needs to go in a little bit harder then say it again, and if they don't get the reaction, then actually maybe touch the horse or, or whip the ground wow. behind the horse to get it going more. The horse is paying good attention to Mary. She's got her ear on her. She's got her left eye on her the whole time. So they're communicating. When you're starting a horse that's never been in a round pen like this before, too, your focus on the pressure on that horse is like body language. Like if you wanted to stop the horse, you would put the pre pressure on the front end of the horse, get in front of it a little bit. If you want her to go more, you put the pressure towards the hip more. Just like you on her back. You just keep adding pressure until you have to, until you get the response you need. There you go. See how Mary just Mary naturally body body language. See how she did that jab step in at her like that when she wanted her to go. Drop. I didn't tell her to do that. She just knows. It's like body language. It's almost second nature. Drop. Okay, now step off and stop her. Ooh. The horse is licking her lips and chewing right there. That's kind of a sign of like a. She's giving in a little bit, she's starting to work with her, starting to have a language, starting to have a repertoire. Okay, now step back and send her the other direction. Take some experience to learn how to handle all these ropes and whips and horses too at the same time. I get tangled. So, on day one, after you kind of start getting them on their directions and start communicating with them, like you just saw, the very next thing I like to, to start to teach is uh, some bend that will turn into, um, into your steering. So uh, it's a little bit long of a lead rope for that. We can set it up there. So what I'll do is I'll put my hand on the hip, try to hold still, and I'll just ask that nose to come around. And the key is, Steady pressure, as soon as I give any to it, she's going to want to try to step off instead of, instead of giving. But what I want is the feet to be still and the nose to come towards me. And it's a timing thing. The timing is the most important part. Right there. She gave just a little bit. And that's when it's real important to, uh, to release. You gotta beat them to that release, man, as soon as they give a little bit. Because that'll teach them to, get, to, to give faster the next time. Right there. Good girl. And she's not quite, she's kind of, she's not wild by any means. She ain't used to having her face petted, petted on yet, loved on. So I need to stop trying to, so the mare we just got done with, Queen, her reward her spot is right here. She likes to be petted. Well, this mare is a little bit unsure about that. I'm in the habit of trying to pet right there as a reward. So I gotta, we gotta learn this mare and figure out everyone's got something different. Some of them like to be patted down here. Some of them like to be scratched up here. We gotta figure out what her reward is before, uh, before I, you know, so that I can know what the right uh, release, release and reward is. There, she's tipping. Good. Good girl. Yeah, that time I didn't have her face and we got a better reaction. She didn't want her face better. Try this one more time. Oh. Important when they step, not to give them a release off that step, because that's not what we're asking for. You gotta keep that pressure on. Oh. There. Okay, now important. Every time you teach something on one side, 
Gotta go right to the other side and start teaching it. You know how they say like right brain, left brain people? Uh, how like the uh, one side's cognitive reasoning and thinking and the other side's artistic? Horses aren't like that. Right side of their brain controls the right side of their body. Left side of their brain controls the left side of their body. They gotta learn it all equally. And what's interesting there, that was the right action, but I think she was doing it to look at the other horse outside. Either way, we'll take the right action and release on it. There, there's a pretty good one. Another thing what I was gonna say is interesting about right and left brain is the horses are right or left hand dominant just like people are. So they're always gonna do something naturally on one side better than the other. Okay, Mary, let's see her, her flex. Ah, that's a good one. Okay, let's go to the other side, see that side. There she goes, a good one. Now, walk off and release, release that for like, t no, take the horse with you. So anytime you're having a little bit of trouble with a two-year-old and they give you a good, a good action as a full release so that they get out of that mindset of where they're having the trouble and, and then they finally did the right thing, you take off, you walk a big circle or so, get them, get them moving. And now stop and go right back to the side you're having trouble on and redo it. Because she likes, this mare's already, I can tell she's left-handed kind of, or left-brained, because she's, she's flexing to the left and not to the right. There, I was, started to do it. Put that hand up on top of the hip and try one more time. Yeah. Oh, that's enough. Yeah, good. Now walk off with her again. Yeah, good job. Okay, so the third thing I like to teach on day one when I'm starting with groundwork, and this is literally day one. The mare hasn't hardly even been in the round pen before. Uh, she's just a gentle nature horse. Uh, would be to stand still. It's obviously not going to be a problem with this one. But um, what I would be doing, I'll send them a direction. Come on, get up, get up, get up. Then what I'll do is uh, I'll walk all around stand here. And if she takes off, hey, I'm gonna run her off, you know. Send her a direction or something. Maybe we might even do it without a rope, just to keep it keep it out of out of the shot and out of the trouble. You don't have to have a rope on them to do this. Matter of fact, sometimes rope's in the way. So what I want her to know is if she's standing still, being good, I don't add the pressure. If she moves without my permission or without a cue from me, then I drive her away harder, okay? Now, if she's out not willing to move right now, 
So I don't know if this mare knows how to pick her feet up or not. Another good way to teach your horse to stand for a horseshoe do this technique where you're picking your feet up. She obviously she don't mind that too much. Well now as she took off or moved, tried to pull away from me, I'd let her go, but I'd send her and I'd run her butt around a few circles until she stopped. Try the back leg. I'd say this mare's had that done to her before. They're generally not that, that easy the first time. First time I've tried to pick them up. Okay. I forgive that one because that might have just been out of balance or something. She didn't really try to leave, she just moved a little bit. Yeah, it's real good. 